My colleague Sally and I are going to introduce you to SKF in the agricultural sector. Hello everyone, look forward to taking you through this webinar. What we're going to do, we're going to take you through various sec sections of how, what's important to get more life out of your bearings in the field. From buying and selecting a bearing through to mounting correctly, the importance of lubrication along with alignment and taking you through to dismounting in such a manner that you're ready to go again. So the first slide is bound selection and how we buy a bearing and the importance that this is. Over to you, Michael. I think that we've got to look at the requirements of agricultural machinery throughout the crop cycle. We have the tractor, which everybody is familiar with, but it's all the implements behind the tractor, which could be, a, be of importance. You know, you've got to, you've got to plow the fields using tillage machinery. You've got to fertilize. Then there's planting that you have to consider. And then there's harvesting or mowing. And then after planting or mowing, there's baling. So throughout the crop cycle, there are various solution, bearing solutions that are provided by SKF and their brand Pier. Pier is a brand that's been involved in the agricultural market for many, many years, and they specialize in bearings that are specific for agricultural machinery. Lubrication is another important element, and you've got to consider the other SKF company, Lincoln, which provide lubrication systems for agricultural machinery. So why is bearings a challenge in agricultural machinery? If you consider your white goods where you'll have an electric motor, say, in your refrigerator or your, or your washing machine at home, a bearing in that particular position has to operate at high speed. You want the bearing to be silent and, you, and the grease requirement, requirement is small because you want the friction to be a minimum inside the bearing. But in the case of agriculture, the environment is totally different. There's dust and dirt, there's wet and damp. Sand acts as a grinding paste if it gets into a bearing because even a grain of sand is much larger than a lubrication film in a bearing and will cause bearing damage. Fertilizer, slurry, silage can cause corrosion of the bearing surfaces. And there are a lot of shocks and bumps and vibration in, with agricultural machinery. Plus, look at cleaning, high pressure washing at the end. So the environment that a bearing has to work in an agricultural machine is totally different from say a motor car, bearings in a motor car, or bearings in an electric motor in your white goods at home. And in fact, over 90% of early bearing failures are found in the environments that I've just described for agricultural machinery. So what are the typical features of agricultural bearings and how do they differ from bearings that you may be familiar with in other industries or in your car or your white goods at home. Because of the harsh environment, agricultural bearings differ in that we put a lot more grease inside the bearings if they're pre-greased bearings and it, than we do with standard bearings for industrial environments because we want to protect the raceways from external contamination and we want to ensure that the bearing is, has enough grease. Bearings operate at a relatively slow speed so even if we put a lot of grease into the bearings, the bearings will still function correctly. But we also have to not only rely on the grease to protect the bearings, but we have to rely on the correct seals. If you look at the diagram on the left hand side, you can see that the seal has an extended lip. And this is a typical seal that we would use in lawn mowers, for example. The extended lip means that you can allow for a lot more wear before the seal will fail 
In other environments, you might want to put more than one lip. Very, the diagram on the right hand side shows a typical triple lip seal, and this ensures that the bearing can last far longer than bearings with standard seals, which are typical in industrial applications. So more grease, better sealing is already a requirement. But then we have to consider the corrosion, the fertilizer, the silage. So often the locking ring on a bearing, the bearing rings, and the shroud that protects the seal might have to be plated. And this is typical in bearings that are used in combine harvesters, for example. The other thing that we have to consider is the cage. A lot of the bearings that you see in industrial applications have a pressed steel cage. But the bearings that are using agricultural applications would have a polyamide cage. And the reason for this is that a polyamide cage is resilient. So if there is ingress or contamination, the cage resilience will allow for any particles that get trapped between the cage and the rolling elements to easily to, to prevent the, the bearing from, from seizing like it would do if it was a steel cage. These cages are also ideal in marginal lubrication conditions. So even if your grease dries out, bearing will continue to run and won't fail prematurely or seize prematurely. Thanks ever so much for that, Michael. Perhaps you could also um, just give us a little, a few sentences on why we would advise buying, buying via an authorised route. We talk about this a lot from an SKF perspective. One of the big, big issues that we've had in in the last few years is that we're very, very and we're very, very concerned about is is counterfeit product. And the safest way to purchase genuine bearing products is to go to an authorised distributor. But I have just explained to you earlier that there are different char characteristics to bearings used in agricultural applications. So in the UK, we've appointed agricultural specific distributors that can provide the needs for farmers for the agricultural industry because the bearing types are specific for the typical applications of agricultural machinery, tillage, planting, combine harvesters and so on. That's great. Thanks ever so much for that, Mike. Really appreciate it. So now we'd, we'd actually now like to talk about um, mounting and mounting of bearings and why that is so important. Statistics tell us that in the region of 16% of premature bearing failures can be attributed to poor fitting. So this is something that can be reduced by using good practice. So again, Mike's going to take you through um, good practice for mounting bearings. Over to you, Michael. Well, consider what, what happens in a lot of workshops that I've been to. You, you want to mount a ball bearing onto a shaft. And typically, the, the bearing has a tight fit on the shaft because the shaft is slightly oversized compared to the bearing bore. And you've got to fit the bearing to a shaft and you find a hammer and a drift. Or you find a tube and the tube is the wrong size. And you apply the mounting force to the bearing and you can see what happens in the diagram is that the mounting force goes through the rolling elements. And this causes immediate damage to the bearing raceways and the bearing will fail prematurely. As per the 16% statistic that has been shown previously or described previously. So it's important that you can select the correct fitting tools that ensure that, you, that the mounting force goes against the bearing rings and does not pass through the rolling elements. And you can see in the bottom diagram that if you get the correct tool, that the mounting force will go against the bearing rings and will not damage the bearing when you're fitting the bearing onto a shaft or into a bearing housing. And you can see on the right hand side that in addition to having the correct size fitting tool, that you do not have a standard hammer, you have a soft blow hammer that will reduce the impact that the, that the bearing will be subject to when you're fitting the bearing. To assist the farmer and our customers, we have a number of nice tools, nifty tools that you can use to help you fitting a bearing correctly. 
And one is an app that you can download to your phone called the Bearing Assist app. So you go to your iOS or you go to your Android store and type in SCAT Bearing Assist and you can download an app that you can put in a bearing number and it'll give you a method statement for fitting the bearing. You can also go to the SCAV website and go to scav.com forward slash mount, put in the bearing number and it'll give you a method statement for fitting the bearing correctly. Now here's an example of the use of a bearing assist app. You've just taken a screenshot from the phone for a very, very common ball bearing, which is a 6205. And you can see that it gives you a step-by-step -step method statement for fitting the bearing. That's in blue, it's highlighted the correct SCAF tool or tools that needs or toolkit that needs to be used to fit the bearing. And if you want to, you, you can put in your own method statement with your own photographs in the same app if you've got specific applications which are unique to your particular machine to which you're fitting bearings. Thanks again for that, Michael. That's really good. So our next subject is going to be around lubrication. Really big subject. Um, over or under lubrication can be just as bad as each other. And again, from statistics, we recognise that somewhere in the region of 36% of premature bearing failures are due to over or under lubrication. So again, Michael is going to take you through some ways, um, some methods around lubrication. Right, you've got to remember earlier we talked about bearings in agri for agricultural machinery and you get bearings that are sealed for life bearings or described as sealed for life bearings, but there are a lot of bearings in agricultural machinery where you need to re-lubricate the bearing. And when you re-lubricate the bearing, you've got, you've, got, you've got to consider you have to have the right grease because bearings in agricultural applications are subject to a lot of different temperature, temperatures depending which country you're in. You can, you, can, you can have machines in very, very cold climates or very, very hot climates. It's important that you have the right grease. It's important that you have the right quantity of grease. If you over grease a bearing, you can destroy the seal, you contaminate the environment. And when you put too much grease into a bearing and destroy the seal, you're inviting con contamination back into the bearing. So that's why it's very, very important to ensure that you have the right quantity of grease. And this is related to having the right lubrication method. You want to ensure that you don't just get a grease gun and you just pump, because if Sally does one pump on a grease gun and I do one pump on a grease gun, there'll be a totally different quantity of grease. And you've got to ensure that the grease gets into the right place, it gets into the bearing, where it will be most effective. How do we ensure we've got the right quantity of grease? Well, here's a couple of examples. If you look on the left-hand side, we've got what we call a battery-driven grease gun. And the battery-driven grease gun, you can see you can see the screen in the middle. You can actually read the quantity of grease that will go into the bearing. So you can ensure that you get the right quantity of grease in the bearing and that you won't over-grease the bearing. If you have a manual grease gun, you can ensure that you have the right quantity of grease in the bearing by attaching a grease meter which is shown on the right hand side to your grease gun and this will ensure that you're not really dependent on the number of strokes of your grease gun but you can actually measure the quantity of grease that, go that goes into your bearing. The important thing is to is to remember if you look at the graph here is the the, the message is Often and not too much. Because look what happens if you over grease. If you over grease, you cause overheating, you cause waste, and you pollute the environment. And I've already mentioned in agricultural machines, the bearings being sealed typically will destroy the seal and you invite contamination into the bearing. If you under grease a bearing, 
You'll get premature failures. You'll get wear because of the environment that you're in it with agricultural machinery, and you'll get high repair costs and nasty surprises. You do not want the bearing to fail prematurely during harvesting season, for example. So often, it's better to put little and often. And this, the best way to do this is to consider automatic lubrication rather than manual lubrication. Let's take, for example, in, in, in a spraying machine, it's shown in the diagram here, you, you can see that Lincoln provide a grease pump. And the grease pump is often connected to these small little blocks called distribution blocks. And inside those little distribution blocks are small little pistons. And the stroke of this piston inside that block determines how much grease goes into the bearing. So this philosophy of a little bit often is exactly what automatic lubrication lubricators do in for lubrication. So that's why a good option, and it's often provided for by the original equipment manufacturer, is a grease pump connected to distribution blocks which connect to your various grease points or your bearings in an agricultural machine. Thanks again, Michael. So now, obviously, hopefully giving you some methodology here, some some food for thought really around um, how important that bearing life is to you and how you can increase that mean time between failure or any unexpected failures, which clearly when you're out there, that's uh, the last thing that you need when you're in the middle of a, uh, of a process. So now we're going to look a little bit around alignment. So this could be around belts or chains. Over to you again, Michael. All right, let's consider chains or belts and look at the various types of misalignment that you have. If you could, if you look at diagram A, you can have angular misalignment. Or diagram B, you can have angular misalignment, and that's going to cause the bearings to fail prematurely because you're overloading the bearings by misaligning the bearings. Overloading bearings by as much as 20% reduces bearing life by 50% if you look at it theoretically. It's also going to affect your belt life if you don't align your belts. It's going to affect your chain life and it's going to affect the life of the chain sprockets if you don't align your chain correctly. If you look at diagram C and diagram, diagram C, it shows an example of parallel misalignment. So as shown in D, it shows the importance of having the correct alignment when you're fitting chains or belts to your agricultural equipment. And these are these are examples of, of the use of lasers, which will facilitate the alignment of your belts or your chains during the fitting process. You can see that on the left hand side, you've got a laser beam that, that shines straight laser line onto the receiver. And so you can easily see when you're tensioning your belts and you're fitting your belts, that the belts are aligned. The diagram in the middle is typically a green laser beam. And this is the type of laser beam that you would use if there were strong sunlight, because you wouldn't be able to see the red laser beam. So these are two, ex two examples of how you would align your chain, your timing belts, or just, or just a standard V-belt. But in the case of V-belts, if you look at the, di the third diagram, it, it might be better to use alignment equipment that aligns pulley groove to pulley groove. So you'll align your V-belts far more accurately than you would do by using the methods shown in the first two diagrams. Thank you. So now we're going to move on to dismounting. And again, this is another really important subject to consider when removing bearings to ensure the seating and the shaft are damaged as little as possible. So good dismounting is as important as correct mounting procedures. 
and Michael's going to take us through around the bearing pullers that are available. You saw in the previous slide a puller that is spring loaded. And at the bottom right hand corner, you can see the function of this particular puller. It's very, very easy for one person to put the legs of the puller around the back of the bearing to dismount it correctly by using a spring loaded puller. So that's just one example of innovations from SKF to assist you in dismounting a bearing. You may want to consider, in, consider dismounting the bearing from a blind housing. And you can see the top right hand corner, corner that the legs of the puller actually go inside the bearing, adhere to the raceways, that you can dismount the bearing without damaging the housing seating or the shaft seating. So it's a very simple tool to select to, to you select the correct legs and by selecting the correct legs using the bearing assist app you'd be able to dismount the bearing from a blind housing with larger bearings you might want to consider a hydraulic a hydraulic spindle rather than manually dis dismounting the bearing and that would make it far easier to remove a bearing from a shaft and you can see in this particular diagram where you've got the hydraulic spindle that you also have a strong back behind the bearing housing and that will also make sure that you dismounting the bearing and you're putting the dismounting force against the ring where it has an interference fit on the shaft it's important that you reduce the risk of damage to the bearing seatings when you dismount a bearing because new bearings which are fitted to bearings seatings that are damaged by previous bearing failure will cause premature failure of your new bearing. And once again, you can go to sgaf.com forward slash mount or the bearing assist app and we'll give you a method statement and the correct tools for dismounting your bearings. Thanks again, Michael. So a quick recap here, we've gone through why it's so important to select the correct bearing, particularly in the arduous agricultural environment that we're talking about today, and where and how to buy those bearings. We talked through mounting and how important that is and how bearing failure can be attributed to that by poor mounting, and how you can use the um, SKF Bearing Assist app or the skf.com forward slash mount on the PC to gain that information. We've talked around lubrication and again, a really large percentage of bearing failure can be attributed to an overall under lubrication. So again, a really important part of the process is to ensure that lubrication, the correct lubrication is applied to that, uh, that particular bearing. Alignment, again, we've talked about how important good alignment is. Misalignment will cause heat, heat will cause friction, and friction will cause bearing damage, premature bearing damage at that. We've also talked about good dismounting practices and why that's so important. We purposely left out basic condition monitoring at this moment, but again, we are going to give you some details in a moment of how to contact us. And if condition monitoring is something that is of interest to you, please do not hesitate to get in touch. There is additional information and assistance available. A couple of items here. So skf.com forward slash agri is our land is our uh, web page from SKF. Or alternatively, if you type in the items on the right hand side of the screen, that will take you to our agricultural solutions landing page. And I would highly recommend a visit onto this particular landing page. You can also follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook. But alternatively, please come and visit Michael and myself at Lama. Yeah, we'd love to, to see you. Please come and visit. <laughs> so Michael and I would love to see you on the 11th and 12th of January at the Lama Show down at the NEC. And there is where we'll be found. You can also contact Michael or myself or one of our colleagues in the UK and Ireland 
for any additional information or support. Please don't hesitate to contact us if you have any further questions. So, Michael. Thank you for listening to our web page, our webinar. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very much for contacting us. Thank you.